Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. Today I'm doing a product review with Oxido. I've got a new product here we're gonna look at, but I have worked with Oxido before. A couple of years ago, we installed these lights here. I have two of them you can see that have been replaced. These are LED bulbs used in the rear bumper of my GMC Sierra AT4 to just cast nicer lighting onto the license plate because the old ones were these incandescent bulbs and they just didn't look right. It's been two years and I haven't had to replace them. They're going strong. So I decided it was about time we worked with Oxido again and took a closer look at their brand new jump starter with air compressor. Let's go. So let's do a quick unboxing of the AJ01. Now this box has seen better days. That's the shipper's issue, not mine, not Oxido's issue. That's just how it was shipped. But inside here, it looks like it already comes in a nice carry case. And it's a solid carry case too. It's not all flimsy. Flip it over like that. So first we have a manual, it tells you how to use everything. We'll take a closer look at the operation in a bit. We have charger cable, USB A to C, and then we have some jumper clamps for the jump starting. We have our airline for the compressor. And we have a couple different nozzles here and an air needle to hook up to the airline for our various needs. And then inside the bag here, we have the actual unit itself. It's actually surprisingly lightweight. I was expecting it to be a little heavier, but is a pretty nice design overall. Small form factor, but yeah, this is an air compressor and a jump starter for your vehicle. So before we put it to use, let me show you exactly how to charge it up to 100% because when you first get this, it probably won't be at 100%. Mine was at 80. So all you have to do is take a USB-C cable, make sure it's getting power from a charging block or a USB hookup that you have somewhere. I got a long cable here just out of convenience. We're gonna plug it into the input side here. This should display 100% because it's full. The good news is it does have a safety mechanism. If it reaches 100% charge, it will shut off on its own and stop charging. So that's good. And it takes three and a half hours to charge it from completely dead to completely full. You might be wondering about standby time. They claim it can hold a charge for 18 to 24 months, but it's still recommended every three months to charge it up 100%. You might be wondering, does it have pass-through charging? No, it doesn't. You need to charge it, have the battery work independently, use the device as intended, and then recharge it. You could cause damage if you leave it plugged in, drawing power, and then putting the device to use. So I think it's time to put this to use and do our first demonstration. We're gonna try jump starting. We're here outside, it's winter time. I probably should be dressed warmer, but I don't plan on being out here too long. I've got a work truck behind me that hasn't been started in over a month. It's a V8 engine. This little device here is supposed to work on pretty much all gas powered vehicles that would use a 12 volt battery system like this one, and even some light diesel equipment or trucks, I should say. It's not made for heavy equipment. They would require something much bigger than this when they need help jump starting. This here does pack a bit of a punch. It's got 3,500 amps of peak power, up to 50 jump starts. And I have to say the lithium ion construction is nice to make it this light and pack that kind of power. So I am going to try the jump starter on it and we'll just see how fast it fires up. I think that'll be an indication if this is adding some power to the truck so we can get a good start out of it. So here we are in front of the truck. I wanna show you a couple things really quick. Very easy to connect. And this is a smart device. So when I fold this down, this protective cover, when I plug these in, they can only go one way. It automatically knows that we are in jump start mode and we have a blinking green LED right here. You probably can't see it, maybe you can. Now you can't really get this wrong. Well, technically you can, but it has some polarity protection built in. So I'm gonna connect it the wrong way and see what happens. It beeps at me and says, you did it wrong, Don. So we're going to hook it up the right way. Positive. Negative. Now what's gonna happen is the blinking light is going to turn solid green. It just made a click. It's solid green. Now I'm gonna crank it and hopefully it starts right up. Now we can disconnect it. Because this has that built-in battery, it also serves as a power bank to power your USB devices. The USB output right here gives you five volt, 
9 volt and 12 volt device charging. Simply plug it in, long press the power button to turn it on, and it'll power your device. And if not in use for more than 30 seconds, it will power itself off. You might have seen this white piece of plastic here. That's for the built-in LED flashlight. It gives you 400 lumens. Hold press the power, turn the device on, press the flashlight indicator. That's the flashlight. And then we have a couple different warning strobes. And now what I'm most excited for is to take a look at the built-in compressor. So first let's hook up our air hose. It's got a nice rubber grip here. This is what the chuck looks like and it has a lock on it to hold on to either the valve stem of the wheel, which we'll do last, or in this case, we're using the needle to inflate this soccer ball. Just put it in there, lock it into place. Just moistening the needle with a little saliva, old school, and then we can plug it in there. Now on here, there's going to be some presets for the compressor. I'll show you. They're all adjustable. Let's turn it on. And then we hit the mode button and you can see there's a picture of a motorcycle, a bicycle, a ball, and a car. So if we go down to the ball, it sits at eight PSI, so it's recommended. I can adjust that with the up and down buttons here. If I long press the mode button, it allows us to change our measuring system. So whether it be in bars, kilopascals, and so on, I don't even know what that one is, but I don't use that in Canada. So we're gonna go back to PSI, which is pretty common. We're set up on the ball already. Simple, all we do is hit go. I decided to put 10 pounds in it. And that seems just about right. Now let's move on to a tire. This has the ability to inflate up to 120 PSI with a degree of accuracy of plus or minus one PSI. So this wheel here is supposed to have 36 PSI of tire inflation. Right now that's what it's at. I'm gonna let some air out. Now we're going to test this to reinflate this tire. This tire right now is sitting at 28 pounds of pressure. It's supposed to be at 36. A couple things to note with the compressor. They recommend that you don't exceed running the compressor for more than eight minutes. It could start to overheat. To fill a tire from no pressure to 36 pounds, for example, like this one here, it's supposed to take about three minutes. We're not going to take that long because I'm only down to 28 pounds. Keep in mind the battery on this should be able to reinflate four tires on a vehicle of this size off of one battery charge. So we'll have more than enough charge to top up this tire. Connect the chuck. I don't hear any air leakage, which is good. We'll turn it on. We'll switch to the car, 36 pounds. That's what we want. And we'll let it do its thing. So there it kicked off at 36. So after performing one jump start, filling up a soccer ball and partially inflating an SUV tire, we are at 89% charge. I quite enjoyed testing this device for Oxido, the AJ01. They call it a jump starter and air compressor. I call it a portable emergency roadside companion. If you want to learn more, go to Oxido's website. I'll leave a link in the video description below. But if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.